hello and welcome back. Um, you've got your fabric washed, you've cut out your paper pattern. We're now going to move on to cutting out the fabric. And this is the part that can sometimes um, worry people because of course, once something's cut, it's cut. My advice is just to take your time, refer to the layout plans that are in your Tilly and the Buttons booklet and just lay everything out first, check that it's all correct, double check, so check twice, cut once, um, and you should be fine. So I'm gonna talk you through cutting my, my pattern out. Now, I've already made myself the dress, so I'm now gonna have a go at making the top. And if you remember, the front and the back top pattern piece are exactly the same, and if you were cutting the dress, you'd cut the longest line. Um, so I already did that and made my dress that I showed you before. I'm now going to cut the top. So I just started off by cutting along that red dipped hem line at the back. And what I did was I then, the piece that I cut off, I keep safe in my envelope. So that if I then want to make the dress again, I can just sellotape it back on and cut round to create the dress. So I'm going to lay that bit down first. Now, you may notice with this pattern that quite a few of the pieces are cut on the fold. Um, it just says place on fold there at the edge. So it's the same with the uh, skirt piece as it is if you open up the bodice piece here, where's the bodice? Here, the bodice piece also says place on fold. And you'll find that with quite a lot of uh, patterns, they have this place on fold instruction. And all that means is that you're gonna fold the fabric and you're gonna put the pattern piece on the fold. And then you don't cut here, you cut round the edge and then you open it up and you get a symmetrical pattern piece. And it's just quicker and more economical. If you could imagine if all of these pattern pieces were, you know, both sides together, the pattern would be twice as big You'd have to do twice as much cutting um, and, you know, you'd have to lay out your fabric flat, which would take up more room. So oftentimes when you're cutting something that's just a symmetrical pattern piece, you'll almost always see that it says place on fold. And all that means is that you fold the fabric and you place it on the fold. Now with the indigo dress style, you've got quite a lot of pieces that are cut on the fold because you haven't got a zip to put down the centre back or a seam at the centre back. You've got the centre back being one piece and you've got the centre front, the front bodice and the back bodice. Um, they don't have a seam here. So you've got both of these pieces cut on the fold. And then you've also got the skirt, which doesn't have a seam down the front. It's just one panel for the front and one panel for the back. So that's also, so you've got four pieces, the uh, skirt back, skirt front, the uh, bodice front and the bodice back are all placed on fold. So when you've got a lot of items, a lot of pattern pieces that are cut on the fold, um, what you'll see with the uh, plan of how to cut out is they will often say, rather than taking your whole fabric piece and folding it in half, so that the selvage is neat and you just get the one fold down the end there. They say lay it out and then fold both sides in. So as you can see, I've got my, my fabric piece here, which I've washed and pressed, and I've just taken that and folded that in there. And that's given me a nice fold down this edge. And that fold is parallel. This is the straight grain here, which goes in line with the selvage and that line is parallel to it. And then I've taken the other selvage and folded it in. So these selvages, the selvage just means the edge of the roll of fabric. When it's woven, the selvage is at either end. So these selvages just meet in the middle here. Or in fact, I say the middle. What I've done is because the skirt piece is bigger than the top piece, I've folded the, this side in sort of two thirds and the other side in a third. And then when I lay out my pattern pieces, The skirt will fit in this side and you just have to fiddle about with it a bit and tease it until it kind of fits. And then the, the bodice will fit on the other side. So I can now cut my bodice and my back um, skirt panel like this. And then I can come further down and I can cut my 
uh, front bodice with my bust dart there and then I can bring this down and cut the front panel of my skirt and I'm using up the fabric in a very economical way. If I just folded it once and put this down the side I'd have a big strip here that sort of wouldn't be able to be wide enough for the whole of the bodice so by folding it in together like this you create a better layout and that is actually the layout that's um, described here so they give you um, a cutting layout you're going to do it actually on the narrow fabric is on the next side if you're going to do it on um, for a narrow fabric and then you've also got your um, these two different plans are for the one size is one to four and then size is five to ten so just follow these layout plans and if you get um, a bit sort of baffled by them don't worry just lay out your fabric try to follow the plan and just see before you start pinning and cutting does everything fit okay and just double check um, that you're happy with it all now with the pattern pieces it doesn't matter whether you cut them with the um, printed side facing down or with the printed side facing up it's essentially going to give you the same because it's an asymmetrical um, pattern piece you know your left front and your right front and your left back and your right back are exactly the same so it doesn't matter whether you face it down like this or you've got it like that but what you need to make sure of is that this line is on the fold so that you open it up to create a whole piece. Now, whether or not you have your pattern this way with the top here and the bottom here, or this way with the top here and the bottom here will depend on your fabric. If you're using a fabric with a directional print, so something, let's say there were lots of little flowers and the tops of the flowers were here and the stems were here, you definitely want to make sure that all those flowers were the right way around so that the shoulder and the waist, you know, the, you've got the waist and then the hem, so everything's in the same direction. With my spotty print I've got here, it's an all over print, so I could actually lay out my pattern pieces like this. And sometimes by fiddling around with your pattern pieces, you can get some nice, really um, good ways of cutting out where everything kind of squeezes up together nice and tight and you're being economical with your fabric. So you can have a little play around with that and it doesn't matter that these are now this way round and this is this way round because actually the pattern is kind of all over it's a multi-directional pattern um, but just be careful because if you're using a pattern with a direction on it you just want to make sure that all your pattern pieces run in the direction and then of course you've got to put that on the fold so you have to flip it over like that now with cutting out you can either and it's up to you whatever you whatever you like to do you can either cut um, with a, a cutting mat underneath using a rotary cutter all around the edge and you can use pattern weights to hold these pieces down or you can put pins at intervals around the edge of your pattern piece and use scissors and I've not got my cutting mat underneath here so I'm going to use the uh, pins and scissors technique which is what I grew up with and what I learned when I first learned dressmaking but you know it's up to you and actually cutting with a rotary cutter is quite nice and quick and accurate um, so you know you can try both techniques and see what you like so I've got my pins here now if you haven't come across grain lines and straight grains and what have you before when fabric is woven you've got threads or fibres running along the length of the fabric and then at right angles to that, you've got threads or fibres running across the width of the fabric, like a grid. Now you want all of your pattern pieces to be true to that grid work, because that way the, the print is going to look correct. But also your, um, if, you, if you kind of took your pattern piece and you just thought, well, that fits in there nicely, I'm going to pop that there. This is off grain, this is your straight grain. If you imagine your body and your dress and you put a big straight line down the middle, that's your straight grain line with your clothing. And if you can think here, there's your, your line there. You want that line to be parallel with the selvage. You want it to match up to that. In fact, obviously we're cutting it on the fold, so that makes it nice and easy. 
Now it's probably best that I show you this straight grain with a sleeve because this sleeve pattern you don't cut on the fold, you cut as one whole piece. And let's move this up so that you can just see. Um, let's just check that that's there. Okay, so you've got your grain line drawn on your sleeve here. If you've not come across that before, just your great think to yourself your grain line must always in, it, in fact it says on the pattern position this arrow parallel to the selvages so this line here must always be parallel to the selvages and that just means that everything is going to sit straight and true if you cut this like this so that this line here doesn't run parallel to this you twist it a little bit just to try and fit it in the fabric will twist, it won't sew up nicely, your print will go in the wrong direction and, enough, and it just won't work. You need always, all patterns will have, all dressmaking patterns will have these grain lines on them and you really need to obey those grain lines. So you're gonna need a tape measure for this. And if let's say I'm pinning my sleeve here and I'm gonna cut my sleeve out here. So this is just to sort of demonstrate and show you. What I do is I take my tape measure and at the top of that grain line, I measure it from the fold, or I can measure it from the selvage, whichever I like. Let's measure it from the selvage so you can see. So that's 21 centimetres from the selvage. And I just pop a pin in there on that grain line. And then I come down to the bottom and I measure the same amount. Now, it doesn't have to be 21, it's just that that was what fits with my particular pattern. It could be whatever measurement you like, but you've got to always make sure that the measurement from this end of your grain line to the selvage and the measurement from the bottom of your grain line to your selvage is the same. And by measuring that with a tape measure, and that's the first thing that you pin, you will make sure that then when you come round to pin everything else, that this is nice and dead straight. It's running true to the grain of the fabric, meaning that it will sit really well. Now with the pieces of the pattern that are cut on the fold, it's easy. <laughs> you don't have to worry so much about these. Let's just move this fabric down a bit so you can see. <clears throat> okay, so with the, this skirt pattern, for example, with the, the back of the top skirt, the skirt part of the top, um, or the dress, if you're making a dress, you just need to make sure that the fold and the, the edge of that fabric where it says place, the edge of the pattern where it says place on fold and the fold of the fabric are lined up. And that will automatically be on the straight grain because this piece isn't floating in the middle of the fabric where it could accidentally go off, off to the side of it. This piece is actually on the fold, so that's nice and easy when it comes to obeying the, the grain line because you're right up against the fold there. Same with these top pieces, these, these, those are nice and easy because they're on the fold. So you know that they're dead straight because these folds are parallel to your selvage, so you know they're going to be okay. So that's the, um, the grain line explained. So once you've got everything laid out, you've checked your grain lines, you've checked that your pieces that say place on the fold are placed on the fold, then you can just start pinning all around the edge of your pattern pieces and you can start cutting out. So I'm going to go by the layout on the Tilly and the Bottoms um, booklet and I'm just going to start pinning around here. So I just put pins in to begin with at the corners, making sure I've got no pleats in, or folds in the fabric underneath. And I just make sure that um, the edge of that skirt is up on the edge of that fold there. And then once I put pins in all the corners, I just go around and put pins in between. Just make sure everything's nice and flat, even. Just put one pin just there. Okay. And I'll come around to the other side and start pinning those bodice pieces. Now the, um, the bodice pieces, um, like I say, because my print goes in all different directions, I could cut them out like that or like that. But I'm going to do them like that this way around because that's the way that um, it says in the booklet, just so that I'm doing what it says in the booklet so it makes sense. 
Um, you just, when you do this, you just need to make sure that you, when, once you've cut it out, if there's any markings or instructions or notches, that you can sort of see them and transfer them onto the fabric, but I'll come to that in a minute. If you're using the Atelier Brunette fabrics, those are 140 centimetres wide. This fabric um, is 150 centimetres wide. And the lay plan in the Tilly in the Buttons booklet is for fabrics that are 150 wide. So if you're using the Atelier Brunette fabrics or a fabric that's got a width of 140 centimetres, then you'll find that you've got 10 centimetres less here. You just need to move these pieces a little bit so that they fit in together. Um, and my dress that I made before was Atelier Brunette and that was on the 140 wide fabric and it fit fine. So just that you get, you're slightly tighter, just a bit of a jiggling and wiggling around to get it to fit. But as always, if you've got one of my flying bobbins kits and you have questions or you're concerned and you think, ah, oh, I can't bear to take scissors to my fabric, then just, you know, give me a shout and uh, I'll help you. I'm just going to pop pins in at all of these intervals and then I'll cut out. And this is where actually if you have a big enough um, cutting mat and you can just use pattern weights, they are quicker. And I think that's what you see them using on the sewing bees, the pattern weights and the rotary cutters. They've got those lovely big cutting tables with the big cutting mat underneath. Not everybody has that. <laughs> Then I've got my neckline facings here, so I'm just going to um, pop them in as well. I'm going to keep everything sort of facing the same way. Um, sometimes you can think, oh, it fits better that way. I don't think it makes much difference here. So. It's worth just saying before I pin that, if you look at this neck facing as well, this also has a place on fold. Make sure that you get it the right way around because you want to put place on fold to the fold and then that's going to be your neckline facing because this will eventually sit here and you can see it matches up with the neckline on the front of your bodice and this one matches up with the neckline on the back of your bodice. Now, it's quite easy if you're flipping this pattern around this way to accidentally put the fold there. <laughs> That's gonna give you an entirely different neckline shape, isn't it? So just make sure that you think, right, place on fold, place on fold so it's the same, so it fits. 